And now this is how things stood. The cat was on one branch of the tree, the bird on another. The duck, well, her goose was cooked. The wolf walked around the tree, looking at them with green eyes. His. <laughs> And where was Peter during all this? In his dressing room, indifferently paring his fingernails? Indeed not. Our little friend Peter was planning his strategy. Peter got a strong rope and climbed up the gate to the top of the stone wall. From the wall, he grabbed hold of a branch and inch by daring inch, worked his way closer to the terrified bird and cat. Peter said to the bird, fly down and circle around the wolf's head, but watch yourself at all times. The bird went into a dazzling display of trick flying while the wolf snapped angrily at her from this side and that. Meanwhile, Peter made a lasso, tied one end of the tree and carefully letting it down, caught the wolf by the tail and pulled with all his might. The wolf began to jump wildly, but the more wildly he jumped, the tighter the rope pulled. Just then, some hunters came out of the woods, following the wolf's trail and shooting as they came. They had managed to wound a few perfectly innocent eucalyptus trees before Peter cried, Stop! Bird and I have already captured the wolf, so you can help us take him to the zoo. Imagine the triumphant procession. Peter at the head. After him, the hunters leading the wolf. And bringing up the rear, Peter's grandfather and the cat. Grandfather tossed his head discontentedly. So what if Peter had not caught the wolf? That would be another story, observed the cat. And if they ever record it, I'm going to ask for a bigger part. Above them flew the bird, chirping merrily. We have caught the wolf and I am free as a bird. You are a bird, stupid, said Peter. And so our story ends. But not without a moral. In fact, two morals. First, if you've got to be a bird, you're better off being the kind that flies. And second, if you go around like the wolf swallowing ducks, you're bound to end up feeling down in the mouth.